In the previous video, I showed you how you can read data from a text file. I also showed you how you could read a text file line by line, and I left you with a little challenge. Prompt the user for the first name of the person they are looking for, and then search the text file to see if that person exists. If they do, output their full name, otherwise output a message saying that they can't be found. Here's one way you might have solved that problem. I begin by opening up the text file. I then prompt the user for the name of the person they want to find. Whatever the user types in is then assigned to the variable person to find. I've also got another variable called found person, and I've assigned a value of false to begin with. I'm going to set this to true if I can find the person I'm looking for. A variable which can only store true or false is called a Boolean variable. Then I'm scanning the file. So for each line of text in the file, if the person we are looking for is in that line, I set the Boolean variable to true to record the fact that I found the person I'm looking for. I then output the full details of that person and then we force our way out of the loop using the break command. If we scan the file and we never find the person we're looking for, then I set the variable found person to be equal to false. To be honest, I don't really need to do this because it started with a value of false. And if I don't set it to true, that's what it will be by the time we get here. But I'm doing this just for clarity. Once we've dropped out of the loop, I can then test the Boolean variable to see if we couldn't find the person we were looking for. So if found person is equal to false, then I print a friendly message saying I can't find that person. Let's give it a go. I know Mervyn is in the file. And there's his details. Let's run it again. But there's no Dave in the file. As I said, you could simplify this program. Well, there's nobody called Hedy with two Ds. But there is a Hedy with one D. Now let's see how to write text into an existing text file. Or indeed how to write text into a new text file. I'm going to open the file again. But I'm doing it slightly differently this time. I've included a special code, A, which means I want to append data to a file. You may remember from previous videos, what I'm actually doing here is I'm passing two parameters to the open function, the path and the name of the file, and then this special append code. Now I can write data to the file, as you might have guessed, as simply as this. And of course, I have to remember to close the file. Now I'm going to quickly check the text file to make sure that it doesn't already contain Ada Lovelace. Let's take a look. There's the file. The last entry in the file is Bill Gates. When I run the program, there's no output, except I have a new entry in the file. There's Ada Lovelace at the end of the file, but this is not quite what I was expecting. I really wanted Ada Lovelace to be on a line of her own. So let me remove her manually and resave the text file. And we'll take care of this in my program. I'm writing a new line code into the file, backslash n. This will position the cursor at the end of the file on a new line in readiness for the new data. Let's see what happens this time. And there's Ada Lovelace at the bottom of the file where I was expecting her. Of course, I don't need to keep opening the file to check if the new data is in there. I can use a read command. Let's put somebody new in the file. 
and then I'm going to display the contents of the file in the shell window. I'm going to open the file again, but this time with the file handle F2. But I'm not using the append parameter because I want to open the file read only. Now I'm going to use the file handle F2 to read the file and display its entire contents. And let's not forget to close F2. Let's see what happens this time. Well, it doesn't appear as though we've added Tim Berners-Lee to the file, but we have. We're just not seeing it. Let's take a look at the file. Tim Berners-Lee is there. So why has this happened? It's important to realise that I took a copy of the file so that I could read its contents here. I then wrote new data to the file here. But I read the original copy of the file. What I need to do is close the file after I've written to it before I open it to read it, like this. So what are you expecting to see in the output when I run the program this time? Let's take a look. You can see I've got Tim Berners-Lee twice now. Of course, the last time I ran the program, I did successfully add Tim Berners-Lee to the file. I just couldn't see it. And then this time when I ran the program, I've added him again. Why not try this yourself? And why not modify your program to prompt the user for a name, then search the text file to see if the name already exists in the file, if it does exist in the file, output the contents of the file. If the name doesn't exist in the file, then add it to the file.